a.m. time to get up. Uh, maybe you, some of you stayed up late after some of the storms that moved through the area, but when you head out in the roadways right now, it's gonna be super foggy. Live from ASAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Friday, March 22nd. Thanks for joining us. That's the good news. It is Friday, so yes. happy Friday. We did have some storms last, last night, and this is that time of year where you may want to just grab an umbrella anyway or leave it in the car, right, Mike? Yep, keep it handy because we will have, you know, more rain chances coming mm -hmm. up here. And actually, this morning you need a light jacket, not necessarily for warmth, yeah. but it, it's just misty, drizzly, and very foggy in some places. So it almost looks like that the uh, the fog is is maybe getting a little bit better out there by the airport. Uh, could be my imagination too, but notice how the road is definitely damp, so you're going to want to take it easy as you are heading out this morning. Visibility, though, has not changed. Still being reported at just about uh, 100 yards. It has gotten thicker around Stinson, uh, Castroville, Hondo, a little bit better. New Braunfels, thick fog, and then also heading down 37 and toward Pleasanton, and pretty much all of the area, with the exception of the, uh, the bookends, so that's where the dense fog advisory is not in the western and eastern counties, but right in the middle up until nine o'clock this morning. Um, so ending at nine, a lot of times these uh, are issued until 10 o'clock this morning. Good indication that it is going to be getting on out of here fairly quickly. And we're going to see more sunshine by mid to late morning around here. Mid upper 60s right now. And then you look at the dew point temperatures, same numbers. So in most locations, 100% humidity right now. And that with some other factors, why we have that thick fog mold went up considerably yesterday thanks to the rain that we had and then oak was uh, some of that was washed out remember it was about 3400 down to 1660 on yesterday's reading of course the updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning 76 at noon plenty of sunshine 82 high temperature so we're going to end up a good five six seven degrees above normal and it's also going to be breezy today the humidity here in town is going to be okay, but out in western parts of the hill country, very, very dry air and windy conditions. That's uh, prompting a higher fire danger out there to the west later on today. Weekend forecast overall, I think nice details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, any uh, big problems out there? All right, Mike. Well, actually, I just wanted to kind of follow up with something you were saying there. It does look like the fog is getting a little bit better out there from some of our trans guide shots, especially the ones in the downtown area. That looked uh, pretty foggy earlier this morning during our five o'clock hour, but still uh, definitely a situation that you need to be aware about if you're about to hit the roads right now. As we take a look at some of our trans guide cameras, that one's all the way out there in Seguin, by the way. That one there at I-30 and I-10 Bernie East there for our drivers out on the far, far northwest side. All right, take a quick look here at our maps and see exactly what's going on. A couple of incidents let you know about stalled vehicle I-10 westbounds, Crossroads Boulevard. So you see some delays here in this area, mostly right there where that 410 I-10 intersection right there at Crossroads. Now to the west side, still have a stalled vehicle vehicle being reported. Loop 410 westbound at Ingram. So this will be for all of our folks around the Holmes High School area. Uh, doesn't appear to be causing any major delays according to our traffic maps, uh, but you may run into this if you are headed out there by the Ingram Park Mall area. We have cleared out that uh, stalled vehicle that was south of uh, downtown San Antonio at Nogalito Street and 35. So good news there. But uh, overnight we did have a pretty bad crash on 281. Let's go ahead and show you some of this video that we got from overnight. So this crash happened uh, uh, 9 o'clock last night, actually, and shut down the highway for hours there. This was on 281 southbound uh, near Hildebrand Avenue, and unfortunately, this did result in a uh, fatal crash. This was a deadly crash out there. We're still going to try and get more details on exactly what happened out there. But in terms of traffic, the uh, accident here did shut down uh, 281 southbound for hours. It was backed up all the way to jones Maltzberger Road and the Almost Park area and did not actually clear out until 1 o'clock this morning. So again, and we had a deadly crash, unfortunately, out there, 281, but uh, things have cleared out there. As we come back out here to our real-time look here, our current conditions out there with TransGuide, and you do see some of our cameras in the downtown area. Again, fog being the biggest issue. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. A former elementary school teacher now in jail accused of indecency with a child. Sheriff's police tell us that 42-year-old Gabriel Cantu turned himself in. So that is after a student accused Cantu of the crime. Cantu was a fourth grade teacher at Schertz Elementary and officials with Schertz Cibolo Universal City Independent School District say the alleged incident happened last year, but it first learned about that only days ago. District says it notified the parents who were most closely connected to the incident. 
As more parents found out about the arrest, they told us they got worried. I don't know what to say. Like it's, I'm scared about my 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 daughter. I always talk to her. Like, and she the good thing that she come back home and tell me what happened every day. Cantu no longer works with the district. Sheriff's police are looking into whether there were other victims. So if you know anything, you are asked to call the Shirts Police Department. In your morning headlines, lawmakers on Capitol Hill have introduced a $1.2 trillion spending package that sets the stage for avoiding a partial government shutdown for several key federal agencies this week. The bill comes nearly six months into the current budget year and would allow Congress to complete its work in funding the government through September. Among the policy wins that House Speaker Mike Johnson is highlighting for Republicans, a nearly 24 percent increase in detention beds for migrants awaiting their immigration proceedings or removal from the country. A warning for travelers now. Hackers have uncovered a security flaw that could open millions of hotel room doors. Good news is they're helping to fix the problem. Problem. So researchers posing as hackers say they have uncovered a way to hack into key cards to open millions of doors at hotels around the world. Wired magazine reports that there is an urgent push now to fix the flaw. The researchers have not revealed the exact method of how they made a master key to keep the information from falling into the wrong hands. This morning, a secret army unit that played a major role against Nazi Germany in World War II is finally being recognized for its bravery and sacrifice. As Danny New reports, the group's exploits weren't known until over 50 years after the war. They're a Canadian film crew for a science fiction movie. In the 2012 Best Picture winner Argo, many people learned about the time the CIA used the guise of a fake science fiction movie to rescue American hostages. These soldiers are better known as the Ghost Army. But there is another, much earlier example of our nation executing a top secret production to fool opposing forces with a bit of acting. They use their exceptional creativity and resourcefulness. Yesterday in Washington, the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, known as the Ghost Army, were rightfully honored with the Congressional Gold Medal for their bravery and theatrics in World War II. During the battle in Europe, this deception unit diverted the Nazis' attention with a bit of make-believe, staging a fake giant army with inflatable tanks, inflatable trucks, inflatable soldiers, and even sound effects of trucks that were blared for miles. It's estimated that these elaborate decoys saved between 15 and 30,000 lives. I want to thank everybody in my life that I've contacted, many of you. 100-year-old Bernie Bluestein was one of three surviving members to attend, in addition to Seymour Nussenbaum and John Christman. And if you're wondering, um, how have I not heard of this story and these heroes? Well, that's because this information was all classified until the mid-90s. Just ask Bluestein's son, who grew up without knowing how his father had served. I was in disbelief. But it was thanks to efforts from people like Rick Beyer. I'm humbled by what they did. Who wrote a book, produced a documentary, and successfully lobbied Congress to make sure the story and performance of these 1,100 heroes were properly told and honored. If it wasn't for Rick, I wouldn't be up here along with my comrades here. And I'm very proud and happy to be here to receive this honor. Thank you. Like, they have to make a movie with this, right? It's incredible. And speaking of movies, all three honorees had their travel expenses covered by the foundation of actor Gary Sinise, a.k.a. Lieutenant Dan, in New York. For ABC News, I'm Danny New. And looking ahead, the Mega Millions jackpot has inched just short of $1 billion, offering an estimated $977 million top prize in tonight's drawing. So it would be the lottery's sixth largest jackpot, the jackpot has a lump sum option of an estimated 413.5 million. And according to Mega Millions, the overall odds of winning any Mega Millions prize are 1 in 24. However, the odds of winning the jackpot are 1 in 302 million. So that is still better odds if you think about it than trying to win a March Madness basketball bracket. Those odds are 1 in 9.2 quintillion. Quintillion. But don't let that stop you. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes Alert Day coming up next week on Tuesday, the 26th. The University Health will hold a resource fair focused on the disease, and you'll have a chance to learn more about it.
So you can learn more about A1C and speak with medical experts. The Texas Diabetes Institute is hosting the event and you are encouraged to register beforehand. So we have a link to do that on our website, Quesa.com. This is in the Quesa community section. Friday morning, glad you're with us. Thanks for starting your day. 10 after 60 degrees. Just ahead, the Spurs are back in action tonight at Prospect Center. What the team is focusing on now for the final 13 games of the season. Outside with live cam, you now the fog and mist are looking out there at the airport. Yeah, pretty consistent uh, for the last hour and 10 minutes as we have been on the air here at KSAT. We'll be right back. Very important in uh, the, you know, the, the whole focus is on, is on winning these games. And I think we're, you know, We've had uh, our ups and downs in the season, but we know we know each other way better today. So it all comes down to our all of our personal efforts to make this work, but it's going to work. Victor Winbanyama and the San Antonio Spurs hosting the Memphis Grizzlies tonight and made it very clear their objective is to win the final 13 games of the regular season. Memphis, by the way, is also eliminated from playoff contention. Tip is at seven tonight over at Frost Bank Center. And we have some March Madness scores this morning. Already some bracket busting happening last night. The number 11 seeded NC State will pack taking care of number six Texas Tech Raiders. My Texas Longhorns beat Colorado State 56-44 in the Midwest region. Yay! So the Longhorns will play Tennessee. So it will be a tough game tomorrow night at 7. Duquesne upset Brigham Young in the East region. That's a first ever tournament win for the Dukes. An even bigger upset, Kentucky falls to Mike Ostrage's Oakland <laughs> Golden Grizzlies up in from Michigan 80-76. Houston and Texas A&M are among the teams playing later today. By the end of the day yesterday, only 1,845 of more than 22 million brackets on ESPN's website were still perfect. Sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not, not at all. In comparison. Yeah, but congratulations to UT Thank and you. to Oakland. And to Mike's over here. He's very excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, 6.15. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, you know, Oakland completely busted my bracket. I had Kentucky going all the way to the national championship game. Oh, but Mike, really? for you, Ooh. yes, it, it was, but we're good. Because you didn't change you. it after hearing Mike's, <laughs> Mike's, uh... I did not. I should have. <laughs> that always hurts when your yeah. team gets knocked down the first yeah, round. Yeah, exactly. that's a bummer. But uh, for you, Mike, it's all worth it. Oh, well, you're okay, kind. Guys, take a quick look here. 1604, you see that uh, we still have heavy fog in our area, fog blanketing most of the San Antonio area right now. As we take a look, I-10 Bernie East, uh, traffic moving pretty good there, but we do have some slick roads out there. Can just start here with our citywide map because uh, for proper San Antonio, not seeing too many major incidents right now, so that's good news. But out um, headed towards Seguin, we do have a uh, what's reported as a pretty major crash. I-10 eastbound. Uh, if you are about to head into Seguin right now, this is a little bit far out there, so we don't have any cameras in that area. But we will continue to gather more information as we get uh, as we continue through the rest of our six o'clock hour. But if you're headed out to Seguin right now, we do have a, a crash in that area on I-10 eastbound right before you get into the city limits there. Stalled vehicle I-10 westbound Crossroads Boulevard. That's really kind of the only thing that we're seeing uh, in the San Antonio area. Uh, so that's something we will continue to monitor. And looking ahead here, we have the uh, 20th annual Cesar E. Chavez March for Justice. That is taking place tomorrow morning in the downtown area. So I want to show you real quick what the route is. This is a two-mile stretch starting here at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center right there at Brazos and Guadalupe Streets. That's going to come all the way down to South Florida Street and then cut up north on South Florida Street. And this is actually the halfway point right there at that SoFlo HEB. And then we're going to go all the way to Cesar Chavez and get get uh, and wind things up there at Hemisphere Civic Park. So big thing to know in terms of street closures is that um, city officials will start to actually close roads at uh, 7 a.m. and they're going to have rolling uh, openings, I guess, if you will. As so as the march moves on, they're going to start to open streets there. But basically look for some street closures in this area from 7 a.m. to 2.30 uh, tomorrow morning. We have some video of the march that we want to show you real quick here. Of course, thousands of people take part
part in this uh, to honor the civil rights leader uh, Cesar Chavez. This has become a pretty big event here in the San Antonio area over the past couple of decades or so. So make sure to plan ahead. One thing I do want to mention that I did not mention during our five o'clock hour was that uh, Via has a free park and ride uh, from the Alamo Dome. That's going to be lots B and C and they're actually going to start that service at uh, 8 a.m. and wrap things up at 2.30. So you will have opportunities to make it out there and get some free uh, free transportation out there for all of our folks heading out to the 28th annual Cesar E. Chavez March for Justice. Should be a uh, should be a good time out there for all of our marchers uh, that are taking part in this tomorrow. Yeah, super busy weekend. Thanks, RJ. Thanks. And if you're heading out there Thank early you. in the morning, grab a jacket because we're going to be in the kind of mid-lower 50s around the area. But uh, this morning, boy, if you head out, lots and lots of fog out there and damp roads. Just allow yourself some extra time, 60 degrees and uh, that mist and drizzle around as well. It's going to clear out fairly quickly. A lot of sunshine later on today. Sure won't need a jacket this afternoon. 82, it's going to be breezy and humidity is going to be OK today, but especially way out in western portions of the hill country, we are going to have a very dry air and so a higher fire danger way out in western hill country. All right, countdown continues to the eclipse, of course, on the 8th. And here's an interesting little uh, tidbit, 17 days. So the first totality in the U.S. is here in Texas, down there just over the river at 127 Central Time. And it ends out in Maine at 335. So totality across the United States is only, you know, when you factor in the time zone change, about an hour. Basically, so the it's the moon moves. Actually, the moon rotates around the Earth right. from or revolves around the Earth, I should say, from west to east. So I know it rises in the east and sets in the west, but in actu actuality, it moves from west to east and it moves very quickly. So with your conversion, it's now it would be 127 to 235 yeah. our time. Right. So right. Uh, just in, in in reality, just about an hour because it's moving very very fast, more than a thousand miles per hour. The uh, the eclipse actually is it moves across from southwest up to northeast, and of course we got you covered. All right, this almost looks like something out of a out of a sci-fi movie. Those storms that were brewing last night, that just doesn't even look real. But boy, those things really blew up there in portions of the uh, hill country and then swept on through a lot of hail as well and some nasty storms, some uh, severe storms, obviously out there at the airport. It almost looks like things have improved ever so slightly and uh, visibility, though, still technically at uh, just about 100 yards out there, quarter mile at Castroville. It's improved somewhat at Hondo and going out in toward the hill country, but going down toward Pleasanton, still a lot of thick fog and we still have kind of the center portion of the area with that very, very thick fog and the dense fog advisory is in effect up until nine o'clock this morning. As far as temperatures yesterday, hey, Steph, could you do me a favor and bring that remote over, please? Thank you very much. Yesterday, we only got up to 71 degrees, although we finally made it into the 70s. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, some 80s off to the west. Now today, a whole different story. Um, low 80s here in town, and then we've got mid and upper 80s and even some 90s well off there to the west. So we are going to be on the above normal side. All right, six to 10 day outlook going into the first couple of days of April, the end of the month. So as far as precipitation, not looking great, less than what would be considered average precipitation, at least the odds of that. Temperatures close to what we would expect, which is upper 70s now this time of year. And as far as the uh, precipitation going in further into the first week of April, not uh, great, maybe about to normal. Right now, this load, this is what has moved on through here, gave us the, uh, the rain last night, brought that disturbance on through, and now we've got a nice stretch of weather coming on in here for the, uh, the next couple of days. It's gonna be also pulling in some drier air once we get into next week. So today, 82 for a high temperature, mid 70s and then low to mid 50s for the the highs and lows this weekend pretty much normal temperatures and then we do have another chance of rain late sunday monday front comes through pacific front so that's going to get rid of a little bit of the humidity and pretty much what it's looking like right now keeping us close to normal temperatures throughout a good chunk of next week okay more spring like mm -hmm. thank you mike 622 60 degrees we'll be right back There it is. That 
feeling you get when you can do more with less asthma. It starts with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Can you picture it? Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your doctor about Dupixent, the most prescribed biologic for asthma. To some late breaking news, we have a crew on the scene of an apartment fire on the southeast side. You are looking live out there right now. San Antonio fire crews in the 2800 block of Lassus Boulevard. That's near south of Braunfels Avenue. Right now, there isn't much information available. We know four or five units are out there on the scene. You see a lot of those right now with their flashing lights and the wet pavement. We will try to keep you updated as our crew is on scene. And as soon as we get more information, we will let you know. Yes, we will. Time now, 626 and 60 degrees for now. Cross your fingers for a good morning commute. Fog and mist is going to be our big problem, especially in those outlying areas where there are not street lights like there are at 37 and Salado Creek and 1604 at Valley Meadow. Outside with live cam, I tell you what, it's definitely spring around here. We had storms with hail last night, this morning waking up to fog and mist in about 60 degrees. So. We'll get some fashion advice from Mike Osterhage on what to wear <laughs> coming up. I'm not real sure. Well, I like the tie. Oh, thank yes. you. Thank you. That, that works much. for inside the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday, guys. It is March 22nd. Mike Osterhage is standing by with a look at our Friday forecast. I assume you're talking about uh, wearing an outer apparel. Yes. yes. A light jacket's a pretty good idea this morning because there's a lot of mist and drizzle and mm -hmm. yeah, kind yeah. of that dampish cool. Like a windbreaker or something yeah. like that. Right. And yeah. then later on today, boy, you sure won't need it because it's going to be uh, shorts and flip flops with temperatures that are going to be well above normal. Uh, murky conditions, a little, little kind of out of focus there, but I think that's because of some of that fog. Visibility is okay by the airport. Notice the sheen on the highway, though. There's a lot of mist out there with all this fog and uh, these low clouds. And yeah, temperature 60, dew point 60. These are the two numbers. When they match up, then you have 100% humidity. Wind out of the west at 9 miles per hour. Visibility is still just... Six hundredths of a mile, that's roughly 100 yards. So you almost, I mean, you know, at highway speeds, almost can't uh, see your hand in front of your face going uh, with that thick of fog out there. Castroville has actually improved slightly. Stinson's still one mile, but some of these numbers, and Bernie's now up to uh, clear skies, basically, or good visibility. And it does look like it is improving ever so slightly in some places, even just looking out at that live cam there at the airport. Uh, Uvalde, five miles. Three quarter mile visibility, Carrizo Springs, quarter mile there for you folks in Catula as well as down around Corpus Christi. So it's pretty much the center chunk of the area where we have the dense fog advisory up until 9 o'clock this morning. It's going to be clearing out fairly quickly. All around, you see these numbers, mid-upper 50s, low 60s. Then you switch over to dew points, and they're basically the same. So pretty much 100% humidity all around the area this morning. Mold is, from yesterday's reading, very high. It went up considerably. Oak came down from the previous day, I think because of uh, some of the rain washed a little bit of that oak out. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out uh, later on this morning. Today, sunny, hot, slow. Low 80s, well above normal. It is going to be breezy to windy. Humidity is going to be okay here in town, but way out in western portions of the hill country, much, much drier air. And so with the hot, windy conditions and the dry air, fire danger is much higher out to the west later on today. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, mid-70s. We'll start off in the low to mid-50s, normal temperatures. Same thing on Sunday, but more clouds on Sunday. We'll have a couple of showers late, late in the overnight hours into Monday. And then a few showers hanging around here on Monday and the first portion of the day as well as Wednesday. Other than that, next week looks 
pretty nice about normal temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, with all the fog, mist, damp roads, big problems? All right, Mike, yeah, starting to see a lot of different things pop up across our area, so let's get to it as we take a look here. Trans Guide Traffic Cameras, 281 Wilderness Oak, you just saw the fog in that area, 35 at Powell in the uh, south of downtown, and 37 at the Alamo Dome. Still can't see the Tower of the Americas, an indication of what you're gonna see if you are about to step outside right now. So we have a couple of stalled vehicles in this area here, so let's talk about this. I-35 northbound at Frostbank Center Drive, uh, not causing too many delays right now, but there's not only the stall here, but there's also another stall that uh, TxDOT actually just put on their website up uh, by at Ben Zingelman Road. So it's going to be a little bit closer to 35 and 410. So a couple of incidents in this area right now if you are headed out to the east side of town. So back south of downtown a little bit here, we have a stalled vehicle being reported US-90 eastbound at I-35. This has been a pretty busy area for most of the morning. We saw a couple of stalled vehicles earlier there at uh, Nogalitos and Powell Street. This is the latest situation there, 90 eastbound at uh, I-35, again, south of downtown. The rest of the city, everything else is looking okay for the most part. Uh, again, mentioned kind of that inner east side, still seeing some issues there on 35. And uh, way out on the far east side, we still have a, a crash that's being reported, I-10 eastbound, if you are headed out to Seguin. So a lot of different things taking place. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Continue with some late breaking news. We still have a crew live on the scene of an apartment fire on the southeast side. A pair of San Antonio fire crews are still out there cleaning up in the 2800 block of Lasses Boulevard. That's not too far from South New Braunfels Avenue. Right now, there isn't much information available, but we were told shortly ago that the apartment buildings were empty and so no injuries were reported. New this morning, San Antonio police have arrested a second suspect linked to the robbery of an armored truck earlier this week. It happened on Austin Highway near Harry Wurzbach on Wednesday. An arrest affidavit says Melvin Hill Jr. pointed a gun at the armored truck crew and forced them onto the ground. The other suspect, 28-year-old DeAndre Nelson, is accused of grabbing multiple boxes of cash. He was arrested earlier this week for his part in the robbery. Police say Nelson was on social media bragging about going to a casino to spend lots of money. He'd taken the dog out for a walk. The dog made it back to the apartment, but he did not. It has been three weeks and there is still no sign of 21 year old Caleb Harris from New Braunfels. He's a student at Texas A&M Corpus Christi and no one has seen him since March 4th. But as you can see here, the search efforts to find him have not slowed down. This is video of people looking for Caleb near his Corpus Christi apartment. Police have searched hundreds of acres and interviewed his roommates, friends, and family. Yesterday, Case has spoke with Caleb's parents who have not given up hope that their son will be found. We asked his mom what she would say to Caleb right now. This was her message. That we love him and that he um, needs to do everything he can do to fight to get out of the situation he's in and come home. Caleb's parents are offering a $25,000 reward for information to help bring their son home. If you know anything, you can call the Corpus Christi Police Department. That number is on your screen right now, 361-886-2600. Back here in San Antonio, we've wrapped up the latest episode of our Know My Neighborhood series. Out of the hundreds who live in the Northern Hills and Valencia area, only a handful of families actually participate in the Volunteer Neighborhood Associations. For a lot of newer families, the lack of amenities in these neighborhoods makes it hard to justify paying to participate. Our Avery Everett shows us how these neighborhood associations are trying to find new ways to meet new families. To just bring the community together. Even in a neighborhood with hundreds of families, the clubhouse that belongs to the Valencia Homeowners Association usually sits empty. Well, we try and do different activities to uh, promote community. So this place has a lot of potential. We just want it active more often. Valencia's association is voluntary. And we're trying to get the word out. But in a neighborhood with more than 700 homes. Right now we have 75. Wow. 75 members. Yeah, so we've got a lot of work to do. And they're not alone. Northern Hills has a lot of older people, but we're getting younger families in. A lot of our board members are older and they're ready to retire and 
they want to see you know that the neighborhood continues on across both these neighborhoods. We're told by some community members that it can be hard to find something to do for your family in this part of town. One neighborhood pool sits empty and others have been filled up without these amenities. Neighborhood leaders say it's difficult to get newer residents and younger families invested in these community neighborhood associations. We're just trying to um, uh, to bring together and make a, a closer community. Neighbors can join Valencia's HOA for $75 a year and Northern Hills is about 50. It was offered and we can get the newsletter, but we really don't keep up with it as much. When Christian Gonzalez moved to Northern Hills, cost wasn't his issue. They didn't necessarily seem to offer a great deal. He says this playground at Northern Hills Elementary School is really the only one in the neighborhood. Limited parks and locked away pools are the main reasons newer neighbors say they just can't justify HOA fees. I think if the swimming pool like was open, I think that would be a huge, you know, draw to younger families. But longtime neighbors say adding amenities is easier said than done. We have the uh, membership application. Bill Stout packs folders for new families. And what you take your packets every time and you go and try to meet them? Yeah. Valencia's next step is block walking with the goal of building community buy in. What do you want the future of this neighborhood to be? I want to see families out getting together. I'd love to see um, out here having barbecues and playing. And that was Avery Everett reporting. This latest episode of Know My Neighborhood is now streaming on KSAT.com. You can also watch all of our previous episodes right now. Also on KSAT.com, time to start thinking about this weekend. Monarch Fest returns to the San Antonio Zoo tomorrow. It's a big party for monarch butterflies, but there's also going to be games, photo opportunities, and dancing. You can read all about it on KSAT.com. And if you're looking to spruce up your yard, the city's Parks and Rec Department, they are now giving away free fruit trees happening this weekend. So this is their annual fruit tree giveaway, and it will be at Monterey Park on the west side. So Saturday, beginning at 8 a.m., you have to get there early because the line will be cut off after 1,000 people show up. The fruit trees that will be given out include lemon trees, lime, key lime, orange, peach, pomegranate, and fig. The trees are limited to one per household. Before we go to break, we ask for your help and you answer. Thanks for all your donations during the KSAT Community Phone Bank for the Boys and Girls Club. This morning, we're happy to report that more than $4,300 was collected to help the organization's members. The Boys and Girls Club serve some of our city's most vulnerable youth, helping more than 3,000 kids in San Antonio every year. So once again, thank you for all your support. 640 on your Friday, 60 degrees. Well, all the rain we got overnight is watering our lawns and our gardens. And just ahead, Sarah Costa tells us how you can make your own compost to feed your garden this spring. Friday morning, welcome back, 644. If you're watching the clock, the soil you use in your garden is important because it adds nutrients to your plants. You can save some money and help out the environment by at the same time by making your own compost soil. So in this Gardening with KSET, our Sarah Costa teamed up with local environmental gardening business and Rainbow Gardens to show us how you can make your own garden compost bin at home. Want an easy to build compost bin? This one was made for just under $35. Remember I talked about the importance of tossing your food waste in the city green bins and how it's better for the environment? So let's take it a step further and build our own compost bin for our garden. Today, Christy and Becca, who own a local environmental gardening consulting company along with Rainbow Gardens, are going to show us the easiest way to make your own at home. Here's what you need. Four non-painted pallets. You can get these for free at most local nurseries, including Rainbow Garden. Chicken wire, burlap sacks, staple guns, staples, wire cutters, screws, angle brackets, door hinges, a drill, and digging tools. I'm not a drill girly, but Christy is and makes it look simple. Taking these screws and angle brackets, connecting three of the pallets together. Next, cut the chicken wire and staple along all three sides. Then drill in the door hinges. Here's what makes it cute. Staple in the burlap sack 
rocks fill with compost and plant trailing flowers for that cottage aesthetic. Finally, dig a hole in the ground and start your compost pile. Keep your composting simple. You don't want to get caught up in the ratios of the matter. Everybody's compost is going to be different. Add your food scraps first, cover with your yard clippings or raked leaves. Depending on how often you add to it, lightly aerate it once a week to two weeks. In about six weeks, it should start looking more like dirt or actual compost. That's when you start flipping it, about every time you add to it or every couple of weeks. Becca, Christy, thank you so much. And of course, thank you, Robin, with Rainbow Gardens. Hey, happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Somebody let them out of there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, eventually. Okay. I like the flowers around it. It know, adds right? a nice little touch. It is a nice touch. Let's check the uh, time right now. 646. Check back with RJ. All right, guys. Yeah, we have a uh, crash. Want to let you know about in the downtown area for all of our drivers coming in from the Woodlawn or the near northeast uh, northwest side. Excuse me. So crash being reported I-10 uh, eastbound there at uh, the Santa Rosa exit. So we're looking at the I-10 at Frio camera and uh, I believe this is our traffic going into the downtown area on these uh, eastbound lanes so we had a little bit of a closer shot earlier so crews have been out there for a little while trying to take care of this uh, reported crash again causing a little bit of backup all the way to Poplar and even extending a little bit past uh, Culebra there so we will continue to monitor this as we make our way through also want to let you know about a stalled vehicle that's causing some delays on the southwest side this is at Loop 410 and Ray Allison Boulevard it's going to be affecting all of our traffic in the Medina Base Road area and all of our traffic coming in from Old Pearsall Road and going now back to the east side of town. A couple of things here. We had that stalled vehicle on Ben's Engelman. That looks like that is cleared out. Still have a stall being reported I-35 northbound at uh, the Frost Bank Center. So we're going to zoom out real quick here and uh, just let you know that we also have that crash being reported I-10 East headed into Seguin at FM 725. So it's uh, very busy guys expecting that to, to be the case as we get closer to seven o'clock. Try to slow down if you can, folks. Those roads are slick and those curves will catch you off guard. Yep. Yes, they will, especially that 281. Oh, yes, indeed. All right, uh, back to kind of like what uh, Sarah was talking about with gardens and plants and beautiful flowers. And look at Yvonne. Oh, what a nice shot, Yvonne. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous roses out there. That, that color is so intense. I wish mine looked like that. <laughs> can't grow anything. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Appreciate that. It does look like, and again, this is a little out of focus, but it looks like things ha are improving slightly. And even some of those transguide cameras that RJ was just showing, it looks like uh, in some spots, the fog is getting a little bit better. Now, the official uh, the official distance and visibility out there at the airport is still just about 100 yards, but you know, just looking at the camera, it does look like it's getting slightly better. Still, I mean, we have fog around the area right now. Hondo has improved quite a bit. Castroville is still just a half mile, quarter mile there at Pleasanton, a little bit heading up uh, I-35. Uh, Uvalde, not bad. Carrizo Springs, Catula, still plenty of fog, but then, and also down at uh, Corpus Christi, a lot of fog up there around Kerrville as well as Fredericksburg. Dense fog advisory, again, still up until 9 o'clock this morning. But we are seeing signs that it is starting to get a little bit better. It'll stick around, though, for the next couple of hours, and then we'll see more sunshine later on. Warm up quickly, already up to 76 at noon. That's basically the normal high temperature, and then we top off today at 82 so it is going to be warm humidity is going to be okay here in town and out to the west that's where we have really really dry air and windy conditions and that's why the fire danger is very high out in western portions of the hill country today tomorrow or excuse me today tomorrow humidity is going to be okay we're below that threshold of 60 you feel like it if you're outside in the garden, something like that. Yeah, you'll, you'll kind of notice it. We will be slightly lower as far as temperatures tomorrow. Then the humidity comes in here throughout the day, Sunday into Monday and drops off considerably into Tuesday. There is a bit of a Pacific front that's going to move through here, and that's going to get rid of some of that humidity for next week. Here's the low that moved on through, brought the energy through here that gave us those storms last night. Now we are going to start to clear out a little bit of a northwesterly flow. So that's going to bring in some of that, that clear air around here, clearer skies today and for tomorrow. Then the next big trough starts to work its way in here. That's throwing the energy in for late Sunday, Monday, the next chance for some rain. And then this is what is going to pull that front through here. And that's going to clear us out nicely for Tuesday. Maybe a little bit of a disturbance coming through on Wednesday to give us another small chance for some rain. Then as we go in behind that, notice how things are going to try and flatten out, which means basically a zonal pattern, which 
pretty much means temperatures that are going to be close to normal readings for a good chunk of next week. 82 today and then 75s over the weekend. Lows in the low to mid 50s. Normal readings basically for the uh, weekend. Then we get into uh, next week, Monday, a chance for a couple of showers, actually late Sunday, Monday, and one or two little sprinkles on Wednesday. Again, normal temperatures pretty much it looks like going into next week and to finish out the month. Well, that'll be good after that rain and mm -hmm. a little sunshine there. Get out in the garden lawn this weekend. Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 650, 60 degrees. So let's look out there with live cam for now. Yeah, it's, it's not cold, cold, but maybe a nice little light sweater or a nice little light hoodie would be a good thing this morning. And as Mike said earlier, things will warm up, so prepare for that. We'll be right back. Metro Health is distributing dozens of garden beds to help people in our community improve their health, the different benefits of gardening, and the impact this program is having coming up on GMSA at 9. 6.54 on your Friday. Go ahead and check back with RJ. All right, guys, good news for anyone headed into downtown right now. They have cleared out that crash that was reported earlier right there at uh, I-10 eastbound at the Santa Rosa exit. So you do see traffic is, uh, you know, a little bit slowed here in the downtown area as it normally is during this time of the hour. But at least we are getting people through that area right now. So that's some good news there for our drivers in that part of town. South of downtown, we still have a stalled vehicle being reported. US 90 eastbound at I-35. Uh, seen this one uh, on the uh, textile website site for uh, about 30 minutes or so and you do see some delays especially for our drivers coming in from uh, 35 north south of 90 still causing some uh, delays there for our drivers in that area and we still have a stalled vehicle being reported at I-35 northbound at uh, the Frostbank Center Drive but uh, not causing too many delays right now at the moment and uh, seems like we're seeing a little bit more of a delay there 35 at 410 the rest of the city everything else is looking pretty good with the exception of our normal kind of bumper to bumper traffic again make sure to uh, give yourself a little bit more time with this fog that we're seeing out on the roads this morning. Mike? And those wet roads. Now, this picture we've been watching all morning long does look like it has improved somewhat from our vantage point, but uh, officially still just a um, hundred yards visibility. Castro, a lot of fog heading down toward Pleasanton and then starting to thicken back up there up to the northwest up in uh, Kerrville, the hill country, and a lot of the area does have some fog, dense fog advisory till nine o'clock. Then we're going to clear out nicely 60 right now, but we will make it up to 82 about, uh, well, anywhere from five, six, seven, eight degrees above normal. I think an overall nice weekend, more clouds on Sunday, but pretty much normal temperatures, another uh, slight rain chance Monday. Be nice to see some sunshine. Yeah, yeah it will. Kind of Lots a great of week. We'll enjoy that sunshine. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great weekend. We're back at nine. Good Morning America is next.